Okay, this is the first of many exercises that I'll be showing you on how to invent a figure. Anything in art that we want to do made up or invented requires having already had experience with that thing that we're going to be making up. In this case, figure drawing is the thing that we need to have experienced. And then at the same time, careful observation of how people work or how people move in action. Um, I'm taking this pose of David Bell doing parkour and I'm reducing it down to very basic shapes. Uh, this is called figure construction. In the torso, I've taken it and turned it into what would be called the pillow shape. So you have a bent side and you have a stretch side. The tops and the bottoms are wider than the center point is narrower. Uh, then I'm attaching arms and legs to that pillow shape in basic cylinder forms. Um, and the cylinder only reads once we have ellipses put on them. So with the legs, automatically the back and the front are going to have their ellipses applied to them because they're moving forward towards us in a foreshortened state. While the arms are moving forward towards us, they aren't as foreshortened. So I just basically track them with two simple lines for now. Once I know the line position, then I'll go back over them and I'll bring in cross contours around the short distance of each of those cylinders and that'll help me understand the direction that they're facing whether they're facing upwards downwards to the left or to the right or a combination of both I'm also taking all of the lines that I have already previously drawn and darkening them in so that I know which line it is that I'm going to be transferring over um, because I was kind of sketching things out um, the sketch is still just a guess but now I'm solidifying those thoughts and making very sound decisions here um, on all of the shapes that I'm going to be transferring over so here I'm taking the ellipses and I'm drawing them around the shapes um, that have now become cylinder forms um, and we can see their perspective to our position in space, um, the viewer to the referenceable subject. I'm looking at ellipses at the center points of the um, arm and leg cylinders. I'm also looking at ellipses um, at the wrists, at the elbows, at the ankles, and any other place where there's a juncture point. Here I'm blocking out the elbow ellipses, um, and um, then the wrist ellipses the ankle ellipses, and now I have enough information that I can transfer over to the next sheet of paper into our new position. We're going to take this pose and we're going to look down at the pose and we're going to go to the right hand side of the pose and that gives us a, a starting point um, to build this new drawing from. The body is leaned forward and he is jumping forward so we're looking at the angle that his head is in relationship to his legs. Um, we're also looking at the way that the hips and the shoulders are to each other. They're both bent downward towards the right, and are they pitched in reference to each other, meaning are the shoulders and the hips off-center to one another. Once we know all of this information, we can then transfer it over. So I'm looking at the pose from a new position, and that means that the straight line and the bent line of the pillow shape might be in a slightly different position because when we change reference, uh, our reference point to the figure that we're drawing, um, some dynamics do change. Here I've looked at the shoulder and the hip line to each other to make sure that one part of the pillow is bent differently than the other to give it a slight dynamic um, because we don't want to stiffen anything up here, especially since this is a, a, an incredibly active pose. We want to keep everything as active looking as possible. Keep in mind that the arm and leg cylinders are also going to have a slightly different dynamic to our new position because now we're looking at them from a different angle. Um, so that means elbows might be bent a little differently or that we can actually see the elbows bent where in the case of the left arm, we don't see much of the bend because of uh, where the photo was shot. Uh, but since we're looking down at him, we're going to see more of an angle relationship between the upper and the lower half of the arm. Um, now blocking in the leg and the arm cylinders and I'm referencing how the head is to the knees. Um, I can see that in the photograph the head is more forward than the knees are. Um, so that line that I drew from the forehead down kind of helps me see if the head is in front of the leg cylinders or not. And this is all mere projection. By having done a lot of this I do understand the mapping that I have done. Um, I realize that the knees are offset to each other so I'm lifting the right leg up in reference to the left leg so that the uh, cylinder forms are not lined up with one another. That'll stiffen up the pose pretty quickly and it'll also change the way the pose looks from the photo reference to what we're drawing now. Doing the same thing with the hands, I realize that the hand might be too far forward so I slid it back in line with the right hand knee. 
Um, I also realized now that in my original drawing, I could have pushed the pillow shape back a little further in the, t in the torso um, at the pelvis. So I angled the pelvis back and that gave the legs a little more length in the pose that I'm looking at. Now we have a map that we can draw. So I'm taking another sheet of paper and I'm putting this over the top of the map and I'm going to clean up all of the line work. This is going to help me see the pose now um, without all the sketchiness in it. Um, and it'll also be a cleaner pose for me to map all the muscles out onto. In this case, I don't have to start with any very specific spot on the body. Um, I've, I've already mapped everything out, and so I can begin anywhere I want. I realized that that left arm probably does need the dynamic changed a little bit, um, so I repositioned the cylinder to give it a little bit more of a flare off to the left-hand side of the body. I'm bending the arms a little bit further, pushing their flexion, um, so that they have a little bit more of a dynamic to them or rhythm to them to help show this pose in motion uh, rather than stiffening everything up with straight lines. Um, I'm looking at the knees and changing the ellipses of the knees and then when I put this leg in I realized ah, those knees are still really close to each other so I'm going to reposition this leg and change its orientation to give it a further dynamic pushing the legs a little further apart in the position that we're in giving them a slightly different incline or a different position in space uh, to keep that dynamic intact the foot on the far leg isn't showing as much in this particular position so we can only see the bottom of that foot and that's all I'm going to end up drawing in the picture these elliptical lines I'm going to keep on the map because these ellipses are really helpful for me to position the muscles once I start tracking them on the body um, and I'm going to be looking at the elevation of those muscles in reference to the uh, top and bottom point of each cylinder form. So the uh, forearm and the lower leg have kind of a drumstick or a bowling pin look to them. Um, and that drumstick or bowling pin references the muscles on the cylinder form. Uh, I can see that uh, the position of the muscles in reference to the top and the bottom of the cylinder. In this case, the muscles of the forearm and the, the, forearm and the lower leg are about two-thirds the length of those cylinder forms. So this is why, again, we track the ellipses around the body the way we do, at the very top of the cylinder, at the bottom of the cylinder, and then a couple markings down through that cylinder help us position or divide that position into thirds um, once I start putting those muscles on. I've drawn thirds marks next to each of the limbs so that I can see um, where I should terminate those muscles. That way I don't end up exaggerating them too much. Um, I'm putting on all of the other muscles now based upon just mu uh, memory, knowing what their position is in reference to other muscles. Um, but if I were to do this correctly, I would actually be drawing the bones underneath there so I can see their relationship to the pose so that the muscles can be blocked in correctly, especially the forearm uh, with the extensors, the flexors, and the supination muscles. It's a very tricky space and we need those bone references um, in order to put the muscles in where they need to go in their pitch or their dynamic to the pose that we're drawing. The leg muscles are the same way. I could have put on the, um, the femur bone in the drawing and that would have helped me anchor these muscles down more securely. But again, I'm blocking out muscles based upon visual memory. There are the epicondyles of the um, humerus bones and that helps me position where the um, extensors and the flexors might be in reference to our view that we see the model in, um, as well as the supination muscles. Going into the back, I block out the spine, and then I block out both scapulas. And since the, he's dynamic, both scapulas are going to be swept forward just slightly and not as parallel to the spine as I would normally draw them. Uh, once I have the back in place, then I can put the trapezius muscle on. Here we can see the trapezius muscle in reference to the neck, the shoulders, and then to the clavicles and the scapula. Now I'm putting in the clavicles, and that helps me solidify the top of the body um, and the dynamic of those muscles. And then I'll go back in and I'll block out the contour of those muscles more confidently because I now know the position of all of these shapes. Uh, the supination muscles on this right arm um, in reference to the epicondyles on, of the humerus, um, that helps me solidify the forearm and then I can go back in and block in the muscles of the upper arm and get them to overlap dynamically with the supination muscles and the flexor muscles. Um, now I'm putting in smaller details. Uh, once the bigger muscle groups have been put in, I can start putting in small things between those muscle groups. Um, putting in the patellas, 
or the kneecaps. Um, off of the epicondyle on the forearm, I can um, reference where the supination muscles are in relationship to the flexors. Um, and once all of those muscles have been put in, I can then go back around and solidify the contours more confidently because I now have reference points like the original construction of the body and darkening those lines in, I can now darken in the contours of all the muscles more confidently knowing that everything should be in position where it needs to go. Um, and now the last thing I realize is that the head shape is a little on the small side. Uh, so I'm going to go back in around the head and I'm going to reposition it, growing it a little larger um, to help scale it up to the rest of the pose since it is closer to our eye. And that concludes this first lesson. I know I left a lot of information out, but hopefully in the next few lessons uh, I can apply more information to the drawings that we're going to be building.